Listen, I remember every time I think about the subject of Patrick Mahomes, I think about mm. the guy that um, I spoke to, which was you, before this guy was even drafted. He came mm. into the draft, and you was talking about how special this kid was and how he was going to be, and you couldn't understand how so many other people weren't seeing it. I remember the Chicago Bears having the number two overall pick moving up in the draft and passing on him and Deshaun Watson, for crying out loud. We reflect on that, and, we're, and yet last night we saw Super Bowl 58, Patrick Mahomes win his third Super Bowl title, his third Super Bowl MVP. Your thoughts as you reflect on this kid and, and, and what we're witnessing before our very eyes at the age of 28. I think it goes all the way back, Stephen A., to that draft when Brett Veach, the current general manager, he wasn't the general manager yet, but he had gone and scouted Patrick numerous times and went back to Andy Reid and went back to the scouting department and said, look, I'm putting all my chips in. I'm putting it all on the table. He will take us to another level that Alex Smith can't take us to. Mm -hmm. He has that stuff that you can't coach, the kind of things that in games like we just saw last night, he will just take over and make enough plays in order to win the game. And, they, and remember, Alex Smith that year when Patrick got drafted, Alex Smith had a, a Pro Bowl year. He went to the Pro Bowl, had his best year as a professional. Right. They told me that spring after they drafted him, they knew right away in the first OTA minicamp, they had to pull themselves back and say, do we need to put him in here right now? Or should we continue to wait? There were numerous times during the course of the year where they felt, felt as though they should put him in the game for Alex Smith because they thought he was ready then, but they waited. And the fact that they waited and then he came out his first year as a starter and won the MVP and just went ballistic and took the league by storm, it's been up and up and up parabolic since then. Since then. And so last night, when, when you see basically for two and a half quarters, man, he was struggling. Yeah. The offense was struggling, doing nothing. Right. But what wound up happening was since San Francisco wouldn't put them away, he was like, you know what, eventually I'm going to figure this out. Defense, just keep me in there and I'll figure it out. I'll make enough plays to Travis Kelsey. I'll make enough plays on fourth and one on an RPO and I'll do it myself. I'll make enough plays in overtime where I'm going to scramble when they go man coverage and I'm going to darn near score myself. And then I'm going to wind up calling a play the same way that we beat Philadelphia a year ago. I'm going to use the same play and I'm going to beat you, San Francisco. I'm going to beat you and I'm going to put the ball to a guy who we had sent away from here yeah. and then brought him back in McCole Hart. He has that thing, again, that's uncoachable. And, but then when you put it with one of the greatest coaches of all time, it kind of it's a force multiplier, Stephen A, for them both. It makes Andy a better coach. It makes Patrick a better player. Andy told me at practice last week, he said, look, the number one thing Patrick can do is he can come off the field and tell me what all 21 guys outside of himself were doing. Right. And that makes it easier for me. I can go ahead then and make all the adjustments in the world and say, and send him back out there and just let him go. So really what he's saying is this. He's got the mind of the greats of all time like Tom Brady, but he's got skill that is infinitely more than what they are. So as long as everything else around him stays competent, he's going to be able to raise the level of everyone else. And there's no question he will be on the chase from now until his career is over to surpass Tom Brady in terms of winning, not in terms of individual mm -hmm. accomplishment. He's already done that. But in terms of win, how does a multitude of teams miss out on somebody whose talent so far exceeds so many? Because remember, it would be one thing if Patrick Mahomes sat on a bench like Jordan Love did for three years, comes in, plays as well as Jordan Love played this year, even though he had his ups and downs, play as well as Jordan Love played this year. And somebody missed out on that. But if the Kansas City Chiefs had to restrain themselves from throwing him in immediately because the first day of OTAs, they saw what his capability of. How do you explain the fact that nine to ten teams passed up on him and didn't spot that level of talent? How does that happen in an NFL draft? I'll, I'll tell you how. Because, you know, with the 32 teams, man, we could have 32 representatives from each team watch the same guy simultaneously, and you'll have 32 different opinions. Mm. Because it's so subjective when you're just watching the tape. And remember now, at, at Texas Tech, Patrick, man, there were many times where you're sitting there going, what is this guy doing? It wasn't always clean. It wasn't always pretty. I mean, there were some there were some throws where, where he made, like the throw he made to McColl last night that got called back. Or rather, no, it was the play that Tayshawn Gibson should have intercepted. Where he okay. threw, he rolled left and threw it all the way across the field. And there were plays like that at Texas Tech. There were also plays like the interception he threw last night on the force, trying to force it to Travis Kelsey. Yeah. So there were, there were people Overthrown. going, 
Yeah, there's people going, look, he's super talented, but we don't know if we have the structure in order to pull more of the good out of him or whether or not the bad is going to serve us. Mm-hmm. So what happens is he starts to slide. But Andy trusts Brett. Brett tells him, look, in our structure, with Alex Smith here and the way you coach, we think we can eliminate more of the bad, a lot of the bad, and bring out more of the good because the fact of the matter is his upside far exceeds everyone else's. Mm. And he has it up here. So what you do is you take a calculated risk. And a lot of times, look, I, I can't tell you that if he went to 31 other teams, Stephen A., that he'd be the same guy. Okay. He can't tell you that either. Mm. What, what, what he can tell you, though, is this. I have a relationship with Andy Reid that is on the level of Belichick Brady, that's on the level of Steve Young, Holmgren, Montana, Holmgren. It's that kind of thing. And Patrick will tell you himself, look, I just saw a quote where he said this the other day, where I, and, I, and I've seen this before, where he said, I didn't even think I was going to play football. I thought I was going to be a baseball player. I didn't realize I'd be this good at football. Mm. And the fact that he didn't quite know, but he knew he's super talented, Brett Veach didn't know for sure whether or not they'd be able to pull it out of him, but he believed that Andy could. And then going to a place where he can sit and look, you cannot underestimate the power of having a guy like Alex Smith in your quarterback room and what he learned from him. Right. He learned how to be a pro. Because it ain't just about the flash plays, man. It's about the process. It's about, and you know you spend time with Nick. You know how Nick talks about that down at Alabama. No, no question. It isn't about the end result. It's about the work, being dedicated, married, um, sadistic with the work and that's what Patrick had become because of him being around Alex Smith and then being with Andy and then being with Eric Bieniemy, who held him accountable down there let's not let's not discount that either that's right and then they get him then they have Travis Kelsey they get Tyreek Hill mm. they get the offensive line build up this I mean, and it's just it's just compounds well, 